Hi guys, welcome to the video. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to be talking about how to change negative thinking. I've done a couple videos on intrusive thoughts and the source and origin of them. I'll probably put some of those on the screen somewhere or in the description box below so you guys can check that out. Uh, but generally, just, just more of a general video about how to change negative thinking. One of the things that I think that inhibits people from changing negative thinking is them not realizing that they have the ability to control their thoughts, as well as coming to the understanding that you don't always have to be thinking. Thinking can be used as a tool, right? You not always have to be thinking. You Just like you can close your eyes and choose not to look at something that you don't want to look at, you can also turn off the thinking. But there are some people that have not been told that, and so because they have not been told that, their minds have become a field of just different thoughts constantly that's always at work. And somebody needs to say, hey, you know you can just be present. You ever hang out with your best friend or you're talking to somebody that you really like and you guys are just hanging out, you might be talking to your best friend for two, three hours, four hours straight, and you guys are just talking, having an exchange. Neither of you are really thinking about what you're going to say. You guys are just present, enjoying one another, and it's just a flow happening from you to them. Out of As, as the Lord says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you guys are just flowing, and what's, what's abundant in your heart is beginning to overflow in conversation to them. It's not, it's, you guys aren't taking five minutes each to think about and process what you're going to say before you say it. You're kind of just thinking. And so you can be present and just live without always having to think, right? And, 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 and it's like a muscle. It starts off like a muscle. If you wanted today to go work out and wanted to learn how to do pull-ups or push-ups, the first time you try, you may only be able to get one done halfway, and you may feel like, man, I, I can't do pull-ups because you only got half of one done. But if you come back the next day, you might get a, a three-fourths of one done. You come back the next day, you might get a whole one done. You keep going. You might get a full three done. You keep, and that, by, by the time you've been consistent with it for three months, now you're doing 10, 15, 20 pull-ups at a time. But it all started from you making the choice that you are going to start to do the pull-up. So changing your negative thinking all starts with you making the choice that you are going to change how you're thinking. Now, the most important part to realize about negative thinking, as the Lord Jesus Christ says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Lord says, it's not what goes in a man that defiles him, but what comes out. Because what comes out of a man comes out of his heart. He says, out of the heart comes evil thoughts. And so if somebody is constantly flooded with a certain type of evil thought, then that evil thought has taken root in their heart and it's beginning to create thoughts in their mind. So the heart is the root. The mind is just showing you the fruit of the root that started in your heart. And so if you try to just change your thinking, but the heart is still not right, it's like plucking the leaves off the tree, but you haven't dealt with the root. And so whatever was on that tree is going to grow right back in the next season. This is why people will go to a therapist and they'll feel good for a day or a week. But after a week or two, the, the leaves have regrown, the fruit have regrown, and all the things that they went for before, they have to return to go again because the problem has not actually been rectified. The, 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 the biggest issue that we're having is the heart. The heart has been corrupted. The heart has been defiled by sin and, and death. And out of the heart is producing evil. Out of the heart is being produced. It, wickedness is being produced. And these signals are being interpreted by the mind in the form of thoughts that you're getting, which is just revealing what's in the heart. And this is the importance of prayer and being able to go to God and say, God Almighty, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm having these kinds of thoughts. Somebody told me long ago, be honest with God. Be honest with God. And I didn't know what they meant at first. I thought I knew what they meant because it was a simple statement. But it wasn't but a few months until I realized that I wasn't very honest with God. I would just pray these prayers that I thought should be prayed because these are biblical things and these are things that I should ask for. But I wasn't really addressing things that I actually had going on. Like, God, I have this kind of thought consistently. Can, why do I, can you please help me take care of this kind of thought? I, if there's something in my heart producing this kind of thought, can you please remove it from me? And just literally being honest about what's going on, not being afraid or ashamed because God already knows. You're not, you're not going to tell him anything that's going to surprise him, right? When it comes to what's in your mind and in your thoughts, 
Here, right, the Bible says God searches the hearts and analyzes the mind to reward to each man according to his work. So he sees what's in your heart and your mind already. He sees what's in your heart toward your brother. He's not waiting for you to act on it for him to see it. He already sees it in you, as the Bible teaches us repeatedly. And so being able to go to God, if you do have negative thinking, if there is a reoccurring theme of thought that you have, not putting it off, not ignoring it, not pretending it doesn't exist, right? Because that's how things fester, right? If you sweep a little dirt under the rug or you ignore the little piece, on, the little piece of paper on the floor and then there's two papers and you ignore the two, then there's three. Next thing you know, you have a whole room full of papers because you've ignored the one. And so once you realize a consistent theme, once you realize that these are reoccurring thoughts, go to God openly and honestly and talk to God the Father and tell him exactly what you have going on in your mind. Tell him you know it's unholy. Tell him you know it's unrighteous. Tell him you don't know why you feel like this and ask if he could help you. Ask if he can heal it. Ask if he can deliver you. Ask if he can set you free from those thoughts. There are some people out there who have submitted to this idea that everyone has negative thoughts and everyone's always going to have negative thoughts. There's people that I've heard say, and I've heard several different people say this, this is actually a lie that gets repeated from the mouths of, of Christians. You'll hear Christians say, we all sin every day because what, you don't sin every day, brother. What do you mean? Have you ever had a negative thought? We all sin every day. You have a negative thought, right? And as if they're assuming that because they have negative thoughts, that everybody else must be like them and also constantly have negative thoughts. The Bible says we ought to pick up our cross and walk after Jesus. I mean, following the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That Jesus, we're, he, we, are, we are to model ourselves after the Lord. The Bible says we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, right? So we are to do as Jesus Christ did. Jesus says, be perfect for, you are per for, for, for your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus says, be, be holy. God says, be holy for he is holy. I don't think Jesus was walking on the earth having a bunch of negative and wicked thoughts all the time. And he told us to be like him. So that must mean we can do it, right? Not in our own strength, but in the strength that we receive by abiding in Jesus Christ. So don't project this idea that everyone sins every day because you have negative thoughts and you just can't fathom how anybody could control their mind because you may not be able to control yours. But that's why we go to God, right? There's people that can't control their tongue. Right. And, and I, I've always told people this about like this. Somebody, I, I've seen several people say, man, I, I can't stop cursing. I don't know what it is. I try to stop cursing, but I can't stop. It's like they're saying they have no control over what comes out of their mouth. That, to me, that's scary. Right. And, and of course, there's a, a deeper spiritual origin, but it, it's scary on the surface to say that th there's words that I can't stop saying no matter how hard I try. And they've submitted themselves to this idea to this agreement that it's okay that anything could come out of their mouth that they can't control. And that gives the legal right. That gives the, 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 the access. That's why it's keeping to happen because they're not even taking responsibility for their own tongue. They've yielded their members to another power, to another force. And now things are coming out of their mouths that they can't even control. So that happens with the tongue, we know. Right? But... There's a similar parallel here with thoughts, right? There's a similar parallel here with thinking and thoughts. It's people that can't control their tongue, and there's some people that do. I know when I first came to Jesus Christ, I used to curse and say things and stuff like that. But when I got born again, when I got delivered of demonic spirits that was uh, uh, attacking me, that was influencing me and leading me down a path of darkness and destruction, my language changed, right? Right? I, I, I just randomly one day stopped cursing. I didn't even realize the, the source or the origin of it. It just, it just kind of happened. It happened through being delivered, right? Being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? It, this, my, my life changed, right? But in the same fashion, our thinking can change, right? Our thinking can change. We don't have to submit ourselves to these false ideas that we're going to have. These No, the Bible says take, we take every thought captive and make it obey Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. This is one of the things that I use if I ever get a thought because thoughts can come and I'm going to address our thought sins in just a second. But thought, a thought can come because a thought, a whisper can come. You can see an advertisement and see a thought. So not every single thought is a sin, but I'm, I'm going to get on that in just a moment. And 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, 
we cast, we are casting down, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's another translation that, that, that words it in a way that I word it in my mind. If I ever have a thought that I don't want to have, as soon as I can realize it, I say, I take every thought captive and make it obey Jesus. Just like this scripture says, we take every thought into captivity. It says, take every thought into captivity and make it obey Jesus Christ. So if I have a thought that I don't want to have, I take every thought captive to obey Jesus Christ. I'll set it in my mind 5, 10, 15 times, however many times it takes to overcome whatever that thought is and whatever the source of it is, right? Because thoughts can come from whispers. Thoughts can come from a demonic spirit trying to project something onto you. Thoughts can come from a few different sources. You could have saw something. You could have been watching something on TV and now it's replaying, right? But I'm, not, I'm talking about the things that are reoccurring. When, when you're dealing with, uh, with thoughts out of the heart, these are things that happen to be reoccurring. Not like one-offs, like you've seen an advertisement of Tide and you had a thought about a, thought about a, a Tide product, right? But there's people that say, oh, everybody, had, you don't sin every day, brother, because you know a, a negative thought is a sin. No, because a negative, a negative thought on, the, on its surface is not just a sin because a negative thought can come from anywhere, right? Somebody could have said something to you and th- what they said to you is negative and it's in your mind just for that moment. That doesn't make you sinning, right? Now, what is a sin, this is just from my perspective and understanding, right? Um, what is a sin is when you let that thought fester, when you feed that thought, when you're dwelling on that thought. Like, have you seen an advertisement of a, of a, 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 a supermodel and, and briefly she was dressed provocatively and, and, and just briefly that the image of that was in your mind and you said, I take every thought captive to obey Jesus Christ or you just put it aside instantly. You just saw it. You, you're not in sin, right? Now, if you begin to fantasize about that woman, if you begin to dwell on those thoughts and go into scenes and scenarios and fantasies and, you're, and now you're, you're living and, and bathing yourself mentally in the lust of that image, yes, now you're, now you're, you're building, a, you're joining yourself to it. Right. But n- not for a thought to come into your mind and you say, I take every thought captive to obey Jesus or I-, I-, I reject that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke these thoughts. I will think about the Bible says, think about what is holy, what is good, what is proper. Right. The Bible tells us to think about good things. Think about what is holy when, if we're, when we're thinking. Think about what is good. Think about what is right. So, yeah, if, if, if something happens to come your way, you, you, you take that thought captive. Right. Now, the thoughts that you accept. That's different, right? You can't, sometimes people knock on your door that you don't know. Now, who you allow in is on you. But who knocks on your door ain't on you. Sometimes a thought comes knocking on the door of the mind. But do you accept it? Or do you say, no, I'm not going to allow this thought to come here. Even if it, if it slightly came a little too close, I'm going to push it out now. Now it has to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to accept this. I'm not going to accept this uninvited guest, this uninvited thought, Right? I'm going to take my thoughts captive and make them obey Jesus. So from how I, from my understanding is working with people and dealing with people, no one's charged with a thought just because it briefly crossed their mind. I won't say no one, but in most situations, but the things that you live in, you fester in, you repeat, and you continue to think about over and over again, and you dwell on them for extended periods of time to the point where now your heart is involved, right? That, that's a little bit different. Right. Again, we're followers of Jesus Christ. I, I don't for the slightest bit believe that Jesus Christ was having walking around with a bunch of negative thoughts. I, that, that, I, I absolutely reject that possibility. And I know it's not true. Right. Because we know the Lord. But we're called to be like our Lord and Savior. He is our head. We're called. To, the Bible says, let, this, let the mind that is in Jesus Christ be in you. Right. So if the mind of Christ is in you, then let then, then your mind must we must have pure minds and pure thoughts. Right. And that's something to work at. That's an aim. That's something that we have to, you know, put effort toward making sure that we're not accepting thoughts that are ungodly. But are you going to are you going to fight this battle or give up or come to the realization that Jesus Christ has already won the battle for us on the cross and raised from the dead? That we now have victory in Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We do not have to accept this. But these are these little, this little lie. And there are little phrases going around that people just say. They're not biblical, but people just accept them. Oh, we always sin every day. That's nowhere in the Bible. Oh, we're always going to sin every day. I sin. We sin every day. 
that's that that's not in the Bible. Yeah, people make mistakes, people people slip up, you know, people fall into temptation and things like that. But this idea that we're always going to sin every day is not in the Bible. This idea is it's just, oh, you never had a negative thought? That you're a sinner just like me because you had a negative thought. That's not in the Bible, right? And the idea that you can't control your thoughts and projecting that onto other people is 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 just unhealthy and 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 I think unspiritual. If you can't control your thought, that's one thing that you and you seek God and you work on that. But to project that to other people, to say to other people, well, we're always going to do this. We're all going to have sin every day. We all, we all have negative thoughts. No, you're, you're bringing other people into that lie. And if they believe that and accept that, then they'll, they're accepting a, a similar condition. And, and, and that's not necessary. And so again, um, I did videos on impulsive thoughts when people feel like they have thoughts that are impulsive, that are thoughts that they can't control thoughts that are pressuring them, intruding upon them. And I I had asked the question before, how do you intrude on yourself? Right? One person intrudes on another. Someone cannot intrude on their own self. And so if a thought feels like it's intruding on you, and it's intrusive, and it's wicked, then it has to be coming from another person. Because it's a person pressuring another person with a particular thought. So I asked that question before for people to understand the reality of the spiritual world. That there are demonic spirits. And, and, that, that, and so a lot of people that are having consistent lots of negative thinking. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody had a, had a day or, or a week or whatnot. Um, just people that are having consistent negative thinking. A lot, of, a lot of times the source of this is a spiritual source. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. But there are also demons in this, in an earthly place, you know, in the spirit realm that are causing negative thinking in people worldwide. That are in the mind, in the thoughts, giving the thoughts, changing the thoughts, attacking the thoughts, projecting images, and even intruding thoughts that feel like pressuring intrusive thoughts. And these are coming from other persons. Just like I was talking about the tongue, how if somebody can't control their own tongue, well, then who is controlling it? Are you saying, you, does someone's tongue have a mind of its own and just does whatever it wants whenever it feels like it? Like, how does your tongue work, right? Is your, does your tongue have a brain or are you the one controlling it? And if you can't control your, 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 what's coming out of your mouth, are you saying you have no control over your own brain? And if you're not controlling your brain, is your brain running independently of you? Is it, does, it, does your mind have a mind of its own and it does whatever it wants? And then where are you in the process of when your mind is doing whatever it wants, what are you doing in that process? Right? And if so, if your mind, if your mind is being utilized by someone that's not you, or you can't control what's happening with your mind, then who has control or what or who has control of it? What has control over your mind? Who has control over your mind? And that's when you get into the conversation of demons and demonic spirits in the ministry uh, that modernly is called deliverance today, where people get delivered of the powers that are intruding on their mind and other areas of their lives. And this is something that uh, God has given me the grace uh, to help people with, I went through deliverance my, myself when I was first coming into Jesus Christ for real, and and um, I've, I've been by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through faith in the name of Jesus Christ, I've been able to help people that have watched my channel and and see me other areas like a, 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 attack these issues and not just let them leave them alone, right? Uh, but it starts with with us making the decision that I'm not going to have negative thoughts. I, I am going to think holy. I'm going to think good. I'm going to think righteously. It starts with, it starts with that desire, that, that desire in our hearts that I'm going to think righteous thoughts. I'm going to think holy thoughts. I'm going to think pure thoughts. I am not going to accept this. I'm going to think holy, pure, and righteous thoughts. I'm not going to ignore the, these consistent thoughts. I'm, I'm going to take them to God. I'm going to take them to God's throne of grace and ask for help because I don't want this, right? It starts with the decision of I don't want these negative thoughts anymore. I want righteous, holy thoughts. I want to think the thoughts of Jesus Christ. I want the mind that is in Jesus Christ in me so that I can think what is holy, what is righteous, what is pure, and what is good, and what is loving, 
and pleasing before the sight of God. I want the meditation of my heart to be pleasing in the sight of God. I want a holiness. I want to live holy, not just in my actions, but also in the thoughts of my my mind and what, what what's coming from my heart. I want it to be holiness. I want it to be love toward the living God and love toward my brethren and my sister as Jesus Christ has loved me. I want love toward my family. I want love toward my brethren. I want love toward the living God. I want holy and righteous thoughts toward the living God. I want to think about the goodness of God. Think about the righteousness of God. I want to think about the holiness of God. I want to be grateful to God for every breath that I take. I want to think holy. I want to think holy. And just just beginning to desire thinking holy, thinking what is holy, what is good and what is righteous. And that's the start. And then going to God for help that you may do as you desire to do that you may think holy as you desire to think holy think righteous as you desire to think righteous and think good holy and righteous and pure thoughts before God who sees all and hears all and analyzes the mind and searches the heart that is the video today guys blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praise be our Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus name and our Father in heaven thank you guys for tuning in hit the like button guys comment down below subscribe and share this video with somebody that might help thank you guys